What's up guys, He King here bringing you a review, or sort of reaction to, review reaction, <laughs> to a first ever to Boku no Hero. So yeah, if you guys haven't heard, Boku no Hero is technically somewhat in its final arc, technically it's in its final act. Uh, I wouldn't say we're in the final arc just yet, but um, yeah, Hiro uh, Hirogoshi was it? did say just a few weeks ago that the manga was probably a year away from ending. So in one year this, this series is going to end, which is which is crazy to think about because I honestly thought we had a good two or three years left of this. The reason I, the reason I say this is because you, you look at uh, Acts 1 and 2, right? And each one had basically nine arcs altogether. And then you look at this one, and I think we've only had what, maybe one arc, two arcs, I think maybe in in this in this final act so far. And I mean, I guess when you look at it in a way, yeah, you can see that it's sort of getting rushed now at this point to get to the finish line. Like, because even Horigashi did say, uh, uh, am I even saying his name right? Hori, Horigoshi, Horigashi. I'm just gonna say Hori because. Uh, <laughs> I keep getting these names wrong, but he, he did say that uh, from the beginning he was aiming for like, what, 30, 40 volumes or something? So, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, pretty on point that, yeah, this is going to be ending very soon, so it makes sense. But if that's the case, that means we only are, what, 40, 50 chapters away from the end? So, that, that's crazy, like, just think about that, that's insane. Which also means that the anime is going to be ending very soon as well then, I guess, because, uh, what, we're getting season 6 towards the end of this year? And, you know, hopefully that will just consist of the entire uh, war arc to, to wrap up basically Act 2. And uh, and then Season 7 will consist of basically the last act and maybe a Season 8 to wrap things up. You know, it, here's hoping, but... Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, this week's chapter, and it's a first as well because it's the first time I'm going to be doing a Volcano Hero related uh, video. But yeah, uh, chapter 341, um, and it's called uh, The Story of How We All Became Heroes, Part Minus One. So we, we spent, I think, a good uh, three chapters previously sort of just spending time with uh, Deku and dealing with the uh, uh, repercussions of discovering that uh, uh, Ayoma was the traitor, which, holy crap, that... I think that blew everyone away, didn't it? Because uh, me, I went in thinking it was gonna be the invisible girl, and then you get that chapter where it's like, oh yeah, like uh, he's, you know, uh, all for one's got someone uh, in 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 the academy. Yeah, it's the invisible girl. They show it, and it's like, oh well, there you go. It's the most obvious twist in the world. And then the next chapter pretty much reveals, no, she's not the traitor. It's actually oh, are you mine? It's like, oh, holy crap! Wow, uh, that was totally unexpected. And then now a lot of people went back and they started looking at the clues and it's like, there were clues, there were setups for this. My, my favourite one is, is, the, is the manga volumes where if, you, if you've collected them all, uh, each, it, the spines of each manga volume has a character basically and they're all basically sort of like looking up, right? Like the eyes. But uh, Ayuma is the only one like um, who's looking down and that's the volume I believe where the whole concept of a traitor was, was set up and revealed. So that's insane, like that, that that was there in front of our faces the whole time, so it's like, oh my god, yeah, he was the traitor the whole time, holy crap. But yeah, pretty pretty good, decent uh, chapters in terms of setting up what's to come with the heroes and what they're doing. All Might setting this plan in stage in terms of having to separate Shigaragi from All For One and getting them to a certain distance and then trying to beat them all individually, including the enforcers, uh, the, uh, the, the main elites, the commanders if you will, like Darby and uh, Toga, and Spinner, etc, etc. So yeah, we're, we're pretty much setting up the end game. The heroes have pretty much set up what the plan is. And now, this chapter is moving over to the villain side. So that's great, we're gonna get a POV from the villains now. And uh, the beginning of this is pretty much focusing on Toga going into a neighborhood, going to a home, and you see all kinds of messages written on the walls here from Demon, uh, you know, your fault for having a vampire demon, get lost. So our family's pretty much been slandered, which 
makes a lot of sense. You know, you're you're the parents of of a serial killer of a, of, a, of, a, of a yeah of a villain basically. You're gonna get ripped to shreds by by the surrounding neighborhood. You know, everyone's gonna know that you're responsible for giving birth to this person. You're responsible for doing what you did. And obviously, you know, the parents saying they tried their best in that, which clearly they didn't do a good job. And we we saw Toga's backstory, and for the most part, it was it was a sad backstory. Like you know, they them being very controlling, them pretty much being disgusted of her cook, them telling her to sort of control it. And we just, you know, we're just getting this atmosphere, this vibe of her walking in from this empty, you know, abandoned neighborhood, seeing these messages, seeing how people view her and her family, her going into her house, you know, you get in all kinds of messages like your pay and her going into her room, idiot, vampire, like it's, it's kind of sad. And yet, uh, uh, you know, she doesn't seem surprised Sort of like curious, but not surprised by what she's finding here. And we're getting flashbacks to when she was, you know, she needs to sleep in her bed. And she needs to, from what I'm seeing here, she needs to bite herself. Like, she needs to have this bird, I believe. Um, I don't know if this this is just something in her head. Or if she literally had a bird that she kept in her room. Sort of uh, jumping away on her stomach under the covers. And her biting herself, drinking her own blood. Uh, which is freaky as hell, but... Uh, and her em envisioning like the bird ripping her stomach open and just dancing inside of her like she clearly has a very big bloodlust like she loves blood like a whole and wants to be other people like it is it is creepy as hell you can understand why the parents sort of didn't accept it but uh, at the same time it's like she clearly had like mental issues or needed help like uh, her abilities it's not her fault she was born with them do you know what I mean so she clearly needed help in some regard but uh yeah, she's smiling, they, you know, she's seeing that they threw everything away. There's nothing there, it's like, um, it, yeah, even the bed is gone. There's nothing literally in this in this room. Like, it's like she didn't exist, but obviously the messages on the walls conveying that, no. She, she existed, all right, and people really don't like her. As she's leaving, we see that Darby is watching her from the window. And, uh, yeah, you know, this whole kind of, like, soft spot. It's a, ni it's a nice way of looking at the relation between these two, because now that Twice is dead, uh, it, it, it's sort of like, it seems like he's sort of, like, looking out for her in a way. Like, uh, obviously he's got his old plans besides, uh, whatever Shikaragi has planned, but uh, whatever his plans are, whatever his plans are, whatever, you know, versus them, it's all going to sort of align, essentially, because in the end of the day, it's all about tearing down the world. And he, even he, he, he says it himself, you know, you know, he's even asking her if she's ready for what's coming because obviously she seems very hot-filled, maybe disappointed, but that's not the case. It's sort of Toga accepting her reality and accepting who she is and accepting that she needs to now move on with this and going forward with her plan. It seems like this is a case of a character who is not going to find redemption, perhaps. Which is kind of a shame because I feel like if anyone could get potentially redeemed, it could be her, but... She is too far gone, and I feel like this chapter sort of illustrates that, like, she is too far gone at this point. She is accepting of what she is, a vampire demon. And Darby is there to sort of encourage it, and I believe he blows her house up. He's charging up, and he ends up uh, blowing his house up, and I think it's her house. So it's like him sort of, like, blowing up the last remnant of her past, and just having her sort of, like, take a step into walking towards the future of wiping out uh this this hero society at last um and him pretty much saying you know you just gotta smile while doing it uh smiling like as he says let's smile himiko toga smiling is why we live our lives yeah like darby's insane in his own way but he's also got his own sort of goal they all have their own sort of goal and uh, it's pretty much revealed that uh, Darby ended up getting twice his blood. You know, before he died, he, he managed to recover twice his blood and he's given it to her. And Toga's got twice his blood now, so... And we know that when she likes someone a lot, like really a lot, she can end up using those abilities for herself. So yeah, he, as, as, you know, as Darby says, you will help that sad, sad parade to keep marching. So yeah, we can... You can definitely be sure we're going to see that ability come to some sort of fruition like in the future, in the final battle. Because that's obviously going to be a big thing. And it's going to be a case of how is this going to get stopped? How are they going to stop this? Because we've seen from the My Villain Academia arc what a big problem, you know, twice as quirk caused for, <laughs> for, uh, for Redestro during that fight. 
So, yeah, Togus has got twice his blood, so... This isn't gonna end well, essentially, like... Yeah, this is... Who is gonna be fighting? Obviously, a uh, 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 chunku is gonna. Oh, a uh, unity, uh, unity, uh, uh, gravity, unity is gonna be fighting her. So uh, maybe she's gonna use, uh, like, get into all her power and pick all the twices up and then maybe chuck her down to the depths. Maybe I don't know how this is gonna work, but uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, after that, we move on to uh, where the villains are, the main villains, uh, all for one, Spinner uh, and Shigaraki, and uh, what's the hacker's dude name? Uh, so we're moving on to there. Uh, that it's some sort of underground environment. It looks like they're in a forest area. Is, is that a forest area? Is it a war area? A mountain area? I can't really tell, but they're clearly there. And, uh, you know, Spinner, you know, you got all for one sitting on this freaking throne, by the way, and you got the hacker dude just typing away, and Spinner hearing noises, and, you know, going to check on Shigaraki, and we see this big blob mass of crap, of terrifying crap, this is almost, I've never seen the movie, by the way, I've, I've even got it, but I've never watched it, Akira, like, uh, it looks like Akira, man. It looks like that freaking uh, blob thing that, you know, b b people will probably say like, oh yeah, uh, top 10, end, best or worst endings ever, you know, when he transforms in that thing. That's what it looks like. It's a, it's a mass of flesh just popping out of this tunnel. Like, you can see fingers, you can see hands. It's, it's farms, like, it, it, it's creep, it's creepy as shit. Um, very creepy as shit. shit. You know, Spinner is just like freaking shocked by this. But it all subsides and it goes back into Shigaraki. So he's clearly trying to control this after his fight with uh, Stars and Stripes, who used her ability. Um, I, I don't really understand what happened there. Like, keep in mind, I read this a few weeks ago. But uh, yeah, what happened there? Like, she caused an overload of his of his abilities, I guess, to sort of go out of control. Maybe uh, she removed something that kept the ability in check. Either way, Shigaraki is at this point somewhat damaged. Very damaged, really, if you think about it. And as we're moving on, you know, you've got all for one saying, oh, worry not, Tomorrow is recovering well, you know, as he conquers the Kug Doomsday Fury. So is that the ability that Stars and Stripes had, the Doomsday Fury? I don't know what that is. I I'm not really sure what's going on, but, uh, you know, Spinner is kind of confused. Like, is it is it still Shigaragi? And there obviously it is, but you've got that whole sort of mind meld parasitic uh, symbiotic relationship between him and all for one so you got to wonder at what point where the, uh, is it shigaraki at what point is it all for one at what point where does shigaraki begin and where does all for one end so uh yeah it's a very creepy disturbing situation uh and uh, you've got spinner with one of the hands obviously he's got he's got he's got shigaraki's hand uh one of uh the hands i guess his dad's hand maybe or whoever it is and you got the hacker dude just talking to him, you know, telling him that he's this inspiration now for a hetero, hetero morphs, hetero morphs. These are basically all the kind of villains that are not humanoid, but you know, sort of changed, different. And he's the symbol for that. For the villains, he is that symbol for those uh, kinds of uh, quirks for people with those kind of quirks, the hetero morphs, if you will. He's a symbol for them. So in a way. When you think about it, each kind of villain is a symbol for somebody, if you if you will. Like uh, Toga sort of being this symbol, like this demon for, for for the people, but maybe for villains, it's a case of you know she she's 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 accepting a Kirk. It's a very freaky Kirk, but she accepts herself for it. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then Darby, I'm assuming, is just the the sort of representation of like all out power just being unleashed you know just just go for it and then spinner in this case he's the you know he's the he's the symbol for the heteromorphs like yo we don't have to like get bullied we don't have to be you know traumatized you know uh, get rid of all the races if you will uh one thing i will say is i'm very disappointed i got cut from the anime um after i saw the anime i did read the manga and uh i, I just thought wow that that whole sequence of spinner and them killing off these uh cultists these religious fanatics who are against heteromorphs that should have been kept in so here's hoping we get some sort of flashback to that maybe uh, but because spinner i think is a very interesting character who surprisingly is getting a lot of focus in the in, in uh, 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 got a lot of focus in that arc uh, in the manga and here as well so hopefully they do him justice in the anime when it when it gets to this point but knowing how knowing how they are there like i imagine all of this stuff is going to get shortened down in the anime so in the adaption so yeah it's kind of disappointing 
But yeah, um, uh, you know, as Spinner says, as if I'm a big uh, messiah, yeah, right, I'm not out here serving some great cause, I'm only here for, yeah, as he says. Remember, this guy started off as a, as a stained fanatic, and now he's here just for Shigaraki, he's here just to protect him. He is essentially like, or as he sees himself, Shigaraki's bodyguard. He's not here to, you know, serve as this image for every other heteromorph, but uh, as you got the other villain saying, no, like, uh, but as, as the hacker guy says, but the die is cost already, no going back. So, the, the, you know, the escaped convicts are one matter, but the common uh, writers in the street await your lead. So, yeah, he is a leader in his own way. And uh, the hacker dude gives him off, gives him, I don't know, some sort of uh, USB drive, a book, maybe? I can't really tell what that is. I think it's some sort of drive, and he's giving him... Yeah, uh, and pretty much everyone here, it, this is an interesting line, no matter how an average dude like me feels about it, we're past the point of no return here, huh? And yeah, it's kind of it's kind of what uh, uh, Darby and Toga were just discussing a few pages back. They're at this point where they can't go back anymore. At this point, they can only go forward with what they want to do now. They've, they've set their path, and now they have to sort of... Uh, die in it. They've dug their own grave in a way. It's kind of a nice metaphor for that really. They've dug their own grave. At this point they can move forward and win or they're gonna move forward and die. There's, there's no going back now. There is no redemption here really. But that said, I do, like I said, because because Spinner was sort of inspired by Stain, I think if there's one villain that can potentially be redeemed, it could be Spinner. I think, I think he is that one character that could change sides maybe when the time comes. But uh, it will be interesting to see, because I do kind of want to see him interact with Stain as well, and see what Stain thinks of his situation and that, so... And how Spinner would feel if Stain ends up fighting alongside the heroes, maybe, or alongside All Might and Deku, so it'll be interesting to see. Ima imagine if Stain ends up being the one protecting All Might from getting killed, like, uh, and he serves as he's a guardian angel from behind the shadows, like... Maybe, maybe not, but, uh, yeah. So you got all for one pretty much saying the first solid step from you will give them the necessary courage. So bring it all down as he tells him. No more thinking it over, I'm only here for you. And as he says, yep, he is only here for Shigaraki. And we end the, with this chapter with uh, a whole horde of these heteromorph villains basically heading, I'm assuming, to where all for one and where all the, the legal villains are. And you even got this slime guy, you got the... I mean, let's see, let's see, we got... We got one villain here, he's got like uh, like uh, spikes here and there, maybe someone similar to, uh, what's his name, Dark Shadow if you will, you know, the, the Hulk dude, uh, pulling out a, a blade and Katana, another dude with like deformed uh, uh, sort of hands and little feet, gives me sort of a Talos from Resident Evil look here, and then of course the Slimer dude, the Sludge guy from the very first chapter I believe that uh, attacked, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Bakugo, uh, Bakugo, yeah, and, and Deku had to save him. So very interesting that we're sort of getting these returning villains, and yeah, and it, and we end with this very sort of interesting message in that uh, all for one till Spinner. Know this, uh, Igoshi, uh, Igo, uh, Igoshi, am I saying that right? Everyone can be somebody's hero. So yeah, everyone can be somebody's, and I guess Shigaraki to Spinner is his hero. You know, Shigaraki is Spinner's hero at this point, uh, when it needs to be Stain, I guess. And it's a very interesting way to look at it that villains can be heroes for for other people, which is a, 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 a it's sort of a callback that you know, like in war, you know, there are heroes on both sides. You know, not everyone is a hero, not everyone is a villain, as he says. He, you know, any someone is a hero to somebody else. He, that includes the villains. So, and that's why all of these you know heteromorphs are gathering, and I'm assuming other villains are going to come in. So, yeah, they've they've all sort of set an image for themselves. And yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see where these next few chapters are gonna go. I'm assuming we're gonna get more chapters focusing on the individual villains and their interactions. The same way that we got like three chapters, I guess, uh, with the heroes, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna get at least two more chapters dealing with the villain side. And then I think we're gonna be moving on to the final, the pre, the setup basically, the act one of the final battle basically. Uh, but yeah, things are getting interesting. It's getting, you know, Pardon, pardon, but batshit insane, and yeah, uh, very interesting to see where all of this goes and how this all uh, uh, climaxes really. Like, uh, 
it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping it's good as last arc because that last that war arc was was amazing. So I'm hoping it's at least this will be as good as that. So yeah. Anyway, guys, that's my review for this chapter, and I hope you enjoyed that. And hopefully, I'll do more of these uh, if I can. And remember to like and subscribe, guys. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.